Warning, this video contains spoilers. Have you ever wanted to enact world peace? Would you like to attempt to save your crumbling economy by doubling your debt and invading innocent farming colonies? Of course you would. And now you can with Total War Warhammer War 3 War Edition. Total War War Warhammer War 3 is a grand strategy war crime simulator that rips out most of that boring gobbledygook known as diplomacy in favor of unrelenting colonialism. This is a game where the only true strategy to take over the world is a six-part plan constantly be in debt, form a superpower alliance and call it Gato. Crush all who oppose Gato. Now break up the Gato alliance and kill your former allies. Think about allies. Regret. You play as one of eight warmongering nations. Half of them are actually pretty fun. Half of them will be fun in a couple of years when you can buy the rest of their rosters. And all of them are on the same exact mission to find a Russian godbear. So strap up and strap on because you are now going to learn about the importance of friendly fire, peacekeeping, and justifying foreign invasion with reasonable Cass's bellies such as because I fucking wanted to. Now, I already told you that there were eight factions, but what I didn't tell you is that human factions have an extremely conscious bias against demons, and as a result, will avert their eyes, screech, and declare war on all of those people, their words not mine, as soon as they see them. This then leads to a couple more differences between the two, but listen, it doesn't really matter. It's time to talk about Kieslev. Kieslev has the best rulers in this game. There's Wide Boris, homeless looking Rasputin, aka Rasputin, and my favorite, communist Russian leader and dictator Elsa and Martin. But I know what you really care about. You want to hear about the commie bears, don't you? The commie bears are so unbearably bad. Who the hell did this to my boy? And was it the same person that decided to make half of their roster hybrid units? And to really nail home the point of why Kieslev is the third best faction in this game, listen to these life-changing transformative quotes. For taxpayers, excellent. Send them to the labor camps. I will impale them! Next up is the Three Kingdoms faction. The Grand Cathay are a people of peace, harmony, and above all, balance. And I'm a really fucking chemically balanced guy, so this faction really speaks to me. When I saw that you had to balance all the buildings in your cities and all the units in your armies and then keep them bound to each other's cheeks like a human centipede, I said, hell yeah, brother. Don't balance your Burger King to planet fitness ratio and your people will start rioting in the streets. Don't fly an emotional support balloon over your melee troops and they will run off the battlefield to their safe space. And don't even even get me started on the big large wide wall of China. Next up, the Shrek Kingdoms are truly the most based culture in this game. Now some people falsely call the Ogre Kingdoms oh, Mongols uh, when these are really Americans baby here, here brother. Think about this for me for a second. They need food to survive unlike the Russians or the Chinese. They're all about warmongering and taking out military contracts and they live in mobile homes which are far superior to actual homes. Need to increase growth in your mobile home communities? Go out there and take a military contract to destabilize a foreign nation with huge growth as your reward. And congratulations, you can now power level your mobile homes and ascend them into mega mobile homes. This right here is Team Big Mass, and I'm a mass man myself, S tier Civ right here. Now let's talk vegetables. We got corn. <laughs> corn is a food, get it? <laughs> I do apologize, I'll be showing myself to the gulag now. Corn's purpose in life is to get skulls. They are like the Predators from the movie Predator. Also, they do not have ranged units because those are for tiny baby men. Real men rock the hardest melee troops around and that's it. Of course, in addition to gas-powered, carbon-emitting motorcycles that drift through the enemy as well as the ozone layer. In two years, when you can buy the second half of this roster, they're gonna be the very best. Now on the flip side, the Zinch hey, hey, faction. People. This faction makes makes me reconsider my stance that watching paint dry is the most boring activity that you can possibly do. Their entire roster is just all the ranged units that they forgot to put into the corn faction, and also their faction ability is to take land, break up military alliances, and open gates. Hey, wait, hang on a second. Is that something that armies can no longer do? But now the Nurgle. <laughs> Now this is pod racing. The Nurgles are a brilliant faction that people call bad because they're bad. This faction has the most unique, fun, and charismatic roster in this game. Not to mention, the big faction mechanic is creating bioweapons and spreading them worldwide, a unique feature that was lent to them by the Grand Cathay. And just a hot tip for the young thugs out there looking to rattle some economies, to max out a plague tree, add higher spread and duration onto a base of your choosing, then sign every military axis agreement you can and let that gunk spread nationwide. Yes, their buildings are kind of wacky, but as the British always say, 
Next up is the Slanesh. Now, as a good Christian boy that has never heard about nor thought about a sinful, sinful breast in his life, I do not believe in the Slanesh's tactics nor condone their sinful behavior in which they conduct themselves. Always making weird sexual advances and statements, and their rosters are full of temptation. I mean, sin! Their special ability when it comes to the map is taking over people's minds to vassalize them with their, with their crazy tongues. No! 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 The girl with sinful thoughts, Lord! Lord, help me. Give me the strength to get the fuck out of here. I give this section the unholy- Fuck. I give this section the unholy tear. God forgive me. Ah. I actually forgot one faction here, the Undivided Chaos Man. This faction's special ability is actually having a full roster unlike every other demon faction. You can also drip them out with the sickest fit, yo. Guinness Book better give this man the award for the most drippiest outfit per KD ratio, yo. There's only one way to play Warhammer, and one way only, and that is being a relentless, a short, and that is being a relentless, a lore tear. I'm fucking, I'm not smart enough to use that word, let's run it back. And that is being a relentless, big, strong hammer, make economy go up empire that seizes land from all and does the bare minimum to care after its dominion. Do you have income every turn? Do you have money in the bank? Well then, shit, son, you're doing something wrong. You see, the only way an empire can succeed is if it is expanding. This number should always be red, and if it isn't, that's an indicator that you should build another army. Speaking of army composition, having them is a good start, and any Anything else from there is a luxury. But the one cardinal rule is that ranged units win auto resolves, and the rest is cannon fodder to give range more time. And in a domination campaign, auto resolve is 90% of all battles, especially siege battles. My thoughts on the siege overhaul is that I never really even got to see the siege overhaul. I didn't get this view by wasting my time on manual battles. However, in the few that I did play, I'd say that auto resolve got a little stronger in this game because they finally found a way to make manual battles cost you more units than auto resolve. A feat previously thought as impossible as the cure for cancer or EA making a good game in the last decade. Alliances now have a currency called war points, and it's easiest to think of these as a war crimes reward system, or in a real life comparison, think of this like Kohl's cash or a Sam's Club membership. Burn down a small innocent farming colony that your friend is at war with, and they will sing your high praises and award you with all of the war points. Then you can in turn use these war points to loan your friend's army when they need it most, send this army to certain death without reinforcing them, and therefore cause your ally to lose land so that you can slip in and snatch it right up. This was a very nice change. Trading settlements is also at your disposal in the most basic and limited way imaginable. You can trade one piece of land for one piece of land, intentionally limited by the developers to avoid what we did to the AI in Three Kingdoms. But oh, look at that. That plan didn't work out very well, did it? developers. Confederation is just as confusing as it was in every other Total War game. Even with 4,000 relations, don't worry about how I got them, I was unable to confederate. In other words, I was the highest valued tier 3 sub to Comrade Elsa, but I got nothing for it. Not even any peak fix. Forcing me to instead launch a full-scale non-consensual confederation killing every unit and taking every piece of land she has. Many people disliked my peacekeeping efforts, so they too were non consensually confederated, and not, not just, just the men, men but, but the, the women, women and the chi- By the end of it, there were only two factions left on this map, Boris and Lizard Friend. Lizard Friend never judged. Lizard Friend never declared war. Lizard Friend stood by Boris Man. So as the final act as commanding officer, I gave the Slavic Union away to Lizard Friend for never once attacking me in 440 something turns. Our relations skyrocketed to 7,000, and with this I retired to the beaches, and mankind was destroyed. Ah yes, I can get used to this diplomacy. Now let's talk about how the cutscenes I never watched found a way to invade my world map and give me arthritis of the hands from all the clicking I must do to rid this rapid spreading disease that they call rifts from my map wide empire. But first you need to know about the story. In Warhammer 3, everyone is on the same exact race to find an overweight god bear that's being wrongfully imprisoned in Guantanamo Bay by a demon named Taco Bellacourt. At least these factions need to locate the bear for various different reasons though. For example, the Nurgles want to put the bear into a 
crock pot and make a stew out of it. The Russians just want their god back. And I don't know, Slash wanna fuck it. Who, who gives a shit? That's not important now. What is important is that in 30 something turns the bear god screeches and spawns rifts into every province worldwide. Don't get to these rifts in a timely manner and they will cause an economic nuke through extreme levels of corruption that no set of buildings is going to outpace. Now hang on a second. This is Future Flake here. As of the next update, that statement will no longer be true. However, I'm about one day away from finishing this video, so by God, if I have to spread misinformation to get this shit out tomorrow, then I'm gonna do it. My dumbass didn't do the tutorial, so for about 240 something turns, I thought that running armies all over God's creation was the only option I had to get rid of these rifts. Until it was finally brought to my attention that this was not the case, and that I could just simply pay all of these rifts 1500 gold to fuck, fuck off. off. You see, now the best part about these rifts, though, is that much like a venereal disease, once they start, they never fucking stop. stop. And the AI is not going to help you get rid of a singular rift because they are too busy collecting all the chromosomes Impressive. from the realms. I do not like the rifts. In fact, I don't like them one bit. Now, I was going to do a whole rant about the realms themselves, but that would be a lot of editing. So instead, I'll just say, realms is bad. No like realms. Get rid of realms. Warhammer 3 is an incredibly fun game that I think would be perfect if they just yoinked out the entire story, campaign mechanics, and Rift specifically, then just slotted in that Three Kingdoms story of kill, pillage, and raid until you become a tier 3 warlord to just focus on going out there and having a good time, champ. When Immortal Empires comes out, this game will be outstanding just as long as they make sure I never see a singular rift ever again. I give Warhammer 3 20 frames out of 25. If you think you can run this game, I would recommend putting that challenge to the test by getting this on Xbox Game Pass. Shutting off the shadows always crashes my game, but at least that always means I'm in the light. And to anyone that's made it this far, thanks for watching. You are the superior human being for listening to and deciphering my incoherent ramblings.